Hey everybody, welcome back to Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. Super exciting couple of shows we did recently giving away uh, the merch. That was a ton of fun. Um, we had four winners. Only three have come up to me so far and, and contacted me. Their stuff will go out tomorrow. Um, hopefully the fourth, Scott, I believe is his name, will get up with me and we can send him whatever he wants. Um, today's show is going to be pretty cool. Uh, what we're doing is a product, uh, basically, review. Um, and I want to let you guys know it's not a, an endorsed product. I'm not making any money to bring this product to you guys. Uh, there's, there's no deal or anything like that. Um, I ordered this product from a gentleman um, a couple of weeks ago and I just got it in about a week ago and started playing with it. It's a jig for cutting hive handles in your boxes. Um, and it looked pretty safe. I've, I've checked out a lot of hive handle jigs. I've seen the ones that guys are building. Um, half of them use them for two years and we'll see how many fingers people have left. That's, that's how I feel about them. So um, this one looked safer and I figured I'd give it a shot. So what I want to do today is is show you guys some shop time that we had, um, show you how it worked, and, and it, it worked amazingly well. I, I've loved using this thing for the entire week that I've had it. But, you know, anything that makes it easier for me, I, I love that kind of stuff. So Because my time's limited, your time's limited. We don't need to spend six hours trying to figure out how to cut a hive box uh, handhold. That's just, that's ridiculous. So, um, I got some shop shots earlier. I'm putting all this together for you right now. Hopefully you enjoy this show. Hopefully this product uh, will be useful for you and can save you time. It's inexpensive, um, well built. You know, I can't praise it enough, I guess. Anyway, let's get to some shop time and see how this thing works. And I'll show you guys all about it. All right, guys, let's get right to it. One thing I'm always trying to do is find something to make my life easier, to make the projects quicker, especially if you're having to make a lot of a particular thing, then something that's always really helpful is a jig or something you can use that, that kind of helps automate the process of what you're doing, whether it's a spacer, a jig, something like that, a, a, an adaptation you've made on your, on your drill press, um, a template, uh, things like that. So today's video is going to be about um, a hive handle jig that I happened to find and, and I'm absolutely in love with the thing. I'm, this isn't a paid endorsement. I'm not receiving any money from the guy who builds these things uh, to do this video. It's just I saw this product, I ordered myself one, I've used it for a week now just to test it out and I wanted to bring it to you guys because it literally is probably the safest way that I've seen to cut handholds in your hive bodies and supers. Uh, it makes it super simple. It, it runs on a drill press. Any standard drill press um, will work. Uh, I did have to modify it a little bit to go into my drill press, and I'll explain that to you guys in just a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, you're probably wondering what comes in the box. The first thing you'll notice when you unpack this box is the jig itself. Looks like it's made from Baltic birch plywood. It's not a cheap plywood. This is a very high quality plywood. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten ply, it looks like, uh, plywood. So uh, it's very well made. Carl does a good job of putting this together. Um, all the holes in it are pre-drilled. For instance, there were two pre-drilled holes here and two here for this adapter, which is cut to fit your um, your shop vac so that when you're using this on the drill press uh, you've got a shop vac connected to it that'll suck all your dust out. The next thing in the box is a poly plug. Uh, this actually fits into the contour bit which is also included. Um, one thing I do want to note, depending on your on your drill press, the, the plug, the arbor plug that came, or the arbor that came with this, um, uh, or the shaft that came with this particular bit is too short for my drill press. My drill press does not have the, the length um, or the travel to have used it. So all I did was I went to Lowe's and I bought a six inch uh, piece of the same material, it's three eighths, 
and an additional two nuts uh, to extend the length. If you can see that, I'll get some close up for you. Uh, the one that's on here, I believe, is three inches. The one that came with it is three inches. I needed a six to work with my drill press. And then, of course, the contour bit itself, uh, which is what's going to form your handle in the, in the hive boxes when you cut them. So uh, this, is, this is the contents, everything you get. Uh, the last thing is, is a template. Uh, you'll notice it has a small uh, notch here. This is used, you put it inside your jig and you're going to lower your bit in your drill press to just above this and line up its radius with the radius of the bit. Like so. That sets the exact height you need for your handles. Uh, which I believe he has made this one and a half inches. So your hive handles will be one and a half inches from uh, the edge of your, of your box. If you wanted to change that, there's no reason you couldn't. Uh, if you wanted to go two inches or two and a half, that's fine. Um, but that's going to make some box types that you would use this on, like shallows and mediums, pretty unwieldy. Let's go ahead and get this set up on the drill press and show you guys how it works. Okay, so I've set it up on the drill press, put the bit in, um, and for me, I actually put a black permanent marker line on the bit itself so I know how far to slide it up uh, to be uh, pretty much correct. But the template, again, like I said, comes with it. Just pop it in, and as you can see, my line that I put on my, on my uh, bit lines it up perfectly. It's just a little quicker than having to use the template every time. I just put the bit up until the black felt tip marker uh, touches uh, the drill press and, and I lock it down at that point. So I can keep the template away, um, out of sight, out of mind uh, for when I really need it. You'll also notice that my particular drill press has a round table um, and of course to keep your cuts square and the right depth from left to right as you put the wood through, uh, it's got a guide on it that's flat, so I had to just uh, clamp uh, a square piece of stock that I made from two sheets uh, or from two pieces of plywood that I glued and screwed together so that I've got a flat uh, 90 degree base here to set this on. That way when it slides back and forth, it stays square to the drill bit. That's the only modification that I made and it's not really a modification. I just glued and screwed a board together and clamped it to my round table. If you've got a square table on your drill press, you're already set. So let's cut some wood. One other thing I also did want to mention, this is set up to cut uh, shallow, medium, or deep boxes. Uh, and it's set up to cut either uh, 10 frame, which are 16 and a quarter usually, uh, 8 frame, which are 13 and 3 quarters, and 5 frame, which are nine and a quarter. Uh, you will need to cut yourself two spacers for the nuke size. And those go in just like that so that your five frame nuke fits in there tight and you can cut your handles for it. The spacers for the uh, for your long size of the boards are these two outside outboard pieces here that don't move. For your 16 and a quarter 10 frame boards, your short boards, you've got these two pieces on both sides that slide forward and that gives you the space for 16 and a quarter boards. And then for your medium uh, short boards, which fit in here, you've got these two screws, which you just screw in a little bit. Uh, they come through the back side here and give you the, the correct spacing in here for an eight frame uh, board. Anyway, there you go. Let's get to cutting. Here you can see the shop vac hookup that I've done. Takes a standard shop vac hose. Pushes right in. I did have to put uh, a little bit of black tape around my nozzle. They, they're all slightly different size. They have standards, but of course nothing's exact. So I put just a piece of black duct tape around my nozzle to give it a good tight fit um, to hold it in place. All right, what, what I've got here is a piece of three-quarter stock. Um, the inside dimension of, of the temp 
of the jig is a little bit larger than that, so I think it'll take up to probably seven eighths stock um, without any modification. Uh, this is 13 and three quarters wide and six and five eighths tall, which is the standard size for an eight frame length strip uh, honey super, Illinois honey super, I guess, um, is what you would technically call it. So let's go ahead and cut a handle on this, see how it works. All we have to do is drop our wood in like so. Since this is eight frame, I'm gonna use the screw spacers because it's eight frame and it holds it exactly where it needs to be. I think one modification I'm going to make, just to make it quicker, is I'm gonna cut, uh, I'm gonna drill out a larger hole uh, and instead of using screws, I'm gonna use dowels, dowel pins. But you can see with those screws screwed in, now it can't move but just a little bit and that's perfectly fine. And then I use the hive tool uh, just to make it in there nice and tight to hold it flush against the front of the template because like I said, there is some play in this for probably thicker wood. Um, but you can either use a, a paint scraper or a hive tool. I'm a beekeeper, so of course I have hive tools laying everywhere and that's what I've used. Let's get the cutting. There's a little bit of fuzz on the trailing edge from the bit, but literally two seconds. That's it. And it's about as perfect as it can be. Sorry about that. All right, guys, what can I say? It's a really great product, <clears throat> super well made, easy to use, comes with the bit, comes with the template to space the bit properly on, on your drill uh, press. I, you know, I love the darn thing. You, you take a little bit of time to get practice with it and maybe, maybe 10 seconds per board to cut the handles. Uh, if you put them on two sides of your box, that's, you know, 40 seconds per box. That's that's doable. Uh, is it production level? Probably not, but it's able to get out quite a few. Um, and so I really like it. I'm going to put the contact information where you guys can get one of these things uh, in the product description. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I am enjoying it right now. Like literally it's taken so much work off of me. We used to have to cut our handles in a router. I didn't like it. Like I said, I tried several of the um, the designs I saw online that were made from wedges with a table that you slid up and down on your table saw blade. That just looked like an accident waiting to happen So with kickback or whatnot. So I decided to go against that and kept looking and came across this. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks.
and please mash that like and subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications. We come out with new videos each month. We're going to be doing a giveaway a month, random giveaway like we did this month, every month from now on. As long as you guys are listening to me and and coming in and interested in what I have to say, I'll keep doing these these prize giveaways. I, th I thought it was really fun. And, uh, and hopefully you guys like the stuff that, that you won on this first one. So I'm Cliff Murphy. I'm the owner of Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. Be good to yourselves. Be good to your bees. We'll see you next time.